Welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. In this episode, we will go over the true cost of a kit car. As this can be an embarrassing subject, I am using the paper bag model, oftentimes seen in sporting events of embarrassed fans. Some say I look better this way. So let's start with the basic cost model of a kit car. A kit is usually sold as a set of parts that the buyer assembles into a functioning car. Usually the major mechanical systems like the motor, transmission, or even suspension and brakes are often sourced from a donor vehicle. It is difficult for anyone to know what the true cost of a kit car is because it depends on so many variables like the cost of the kit, the powertrain and performance goals, the finish quality, and the usability. I feel some builders try to elevate their status by trying to show how cheap they can make it, but I feel that most people want the true answer of what a kit car costs for an average person giving it a try. So in this episode, I will go over the cost of my build to meet my performance goals and usability. I had always wanted to build a car, but one of the things that was holding me back was spending all of the time and effort to have the performance of a donor like a Honda Accord or a Subaru WRX. If I wanted to build a proper supercar, I needed the ultimate performance. So I decided to go electric. I chose the Tesla Model S rear performance drive with 475 kilowatts or 637 horsepower. This would allow me to accomplish my performance goals. So first up, the kit car cost. So after looking through a lot of different kits, I landed on the K1 Attack. So the base kit is $9,900. I was told that I needed to upgrade to the electric version for an additional $2,500. To be honest, I don't know what this upgrade did. As you can see, there are a variety of upgrades. I opted to upgrade suspension and LED brake lights. There are some upgrades that I passed over, like the radiator that I wished I would have spent on, and others, like the interior door handle, that I spent on and wished I didn't. Well, if you think you are done spending on the kit, you are wrong. If you are not going to pick up the kit in person, in the Czech Republic, you have to pay $850 for packing. Not shipping, packing. Shipping costs an extra $3,250. It did not include import fees, which were another $1,000. So the kit in total with my upgrades delivered to my house was $20,600. So on to the major components. For this build, I bought the Tesla Model S rear performance drive unit. This set me back $11,900, but it did come with the motor, controller, drive shafts, rotors, brakes, suspension, and the accelerator pedal. To power the car, I chose the LG Chem lithium ion batteries. At the time, they were one of the most power dense batteries available. To get the 400 volts I needed, six battery modules were needed, and to double the range, I ordered a total of 12 for $8,820. My expected range is around 150 miles. So the other major components were the DC to DC converter, the onboard charger, and the battery management system, which totaled an additional $4,112. So the total of the major components were $24,832. The next category, suspension, steering, wheels, and brakes. I spent $1,906.42 on the steering column, steering column adapter, steering wheel suspension, including springs and shocks. For the brakes, I spent $2,490.38. So I ended up buying three different brake pedals, two of which I didn't use, a brake booster, which I didn't use, an electronic parking brake, a combination valve, master cylinder, brake tubing, and brake fluid. For the wheels, I feel wheels are often overlooked when building a car. You can't build a supercar on Honda Accord wheels. I spent $2,621 for wheels and tires. So for this category, I spent $7,017.80. The next category is electrical. For the electrical, I spent a total of $3,135.50. This included all the electrical wire, and there was a lot of it. Also included are all of the connectors, heat shrink, solder, shielding, fuses, relays, 
switches, the gear selector, gauges, indicator lights, headlights, turn signals, horn, and passive keyless entry. Coolant was the next category and a little less expensive than I thought. I spent $651.97 for the radiator, overflow tank, tubing, connectors, pump, custom machining, and coolant. On to the hardware. So for the hardware, I spent $749.49. This included things like nuts, bolts, pins, brackets, sealant, rivets, rev nuts, gas springs, and rod ends. One of the last cost categories was something I termed miscellaneous items. These are items that I did not have another category for. So this includes things like fiberglass, resin, brushes, filler, paint, door locks, latches, windshield, windshield wiper, vinyl, the vinyl adhesive, seat belts, seat adjustments, stereo, backup camera, antenna, speakers, cutting fluid, transmission fluid, as well as all the steel that I used. For the miscellaneous category, I spent $2,638.44. So another topic not often discussed is revenue. There are some opportunities to recoup some of your money as you're building. I sold leftover parts on eBay for $629.27. An example is the steering column. I bought a Honda Accord steering column for $50. I ended up selling the steering wheel, airbag, and lock assembly for more than what I bought it for. Another revenue, I share my experience on YouTube that also brings in money. Although often not talked about, in an effort to be completely transparent, I have made a total of $2,504.56. That is right. Two years of hard work and you too can be a millionaire. I mean, a thousandaire. I also tried the Amazon affiliate program to include links in my videos for items that can be purchased that I would get a commission for. After three months, I earned $1.48 and was kicked out of the program. I have also begun selling merchandise on my channel. So far, I have earned $0. So now might be a good time to mention I am selling merchandise on my channel. You can find it in this link or on my channel. All the proceeds will be funneled back into the channel to improve the build, provide more build content, and for potential future builds. So in total, all my revenue is $3,215.83. Before we get to the winner, I want to point out a few honorable mentions. So on the low side of the guesses, we had Big Brutus with $1. I'm assuming playing Price is Right rules was the lowest guess. Alan Gill, 31, and W. White Wolf both had guesses less than 20,000. Thank you for thinking I could do this so efficiently. On the high end, those over six figures, and to top it all, everything said it was $1,600,000. Thank you for making me feel that my build was worth so much. So thank you all for playing the cost challenge. The winner of the cost challenge is Michael Anthony with a guess of $56,540. He was only $40.63 off from the actual number. So Michael will be in touch. The shirt is coming to you. So one ratio I always try to live by, it's the money spent per the happiness had. So if you think about it, if you decide to go out to dinner, you can spend $20 and enjoy that meal for an hour. But sometime later, you realize that $20 went down the toilet, literally. But if it's worth it to you to spend that money for the enjoyment had, that's all that counts. So for me, spending money on this build is worth every penny. I will leave you with a few clips of the joy that it's brought me and others. I know you think about it. Stop.
That'll do it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.